form here so we can go ahead and get started and uh, review our minutes. so that we can get comments. Okay, the motion has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay. Thank you. Um, any prospect farm news? Or? Um, the only thing I was going to do is when I have the individual make the signs for Jackson Falls, I was going to have them make one sign as well that just said additional parking. Because once we move the gate and turn the stump dump in, mm -hmm. it's probably wise to have a sign that just tells people there's additional parking up there. So if nobody objects, they will have one sign that just says additional parking, 30 yards or whatever the distance is. That reminds me of something years ago when we started the Prospect Farm, we were going to have a color code that really was just going to confirm what everyone already did. You know, like Jackson Ski Tour and should do whatever their their preferred colors are, and we didn't know. I don't. I don't know if the town has a, a color scheme essentially for signs. Oh, you mean on the signs? On the signs, yeah. like the ones that the AMC sign makers made has, have just been green with or white with green letters, yeah. like the regular National Forest ones. I don't know that it matters, but I don't think we included that in the actual management plan. Yeah, like a, I don't think we did. Yeah. So the ones at the falls, I thought they were going to be brown with white letters. It'd be brown with white letters. Okay. That's what he's got the sheet of right now. Yeah. Yeah, but this was the the signs that we made that are town signs rather than forest service signs mm -hmm. or ski tour signs up there, I think, are currently in white or green. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we have to keep that. It'd just be nice to have a standard, whatever it is. I have no real preference. Those plastic wood signs are going to last forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you make a good choice. So is it green with white lettering, or is it white with green lettering? White with green letters. Are the, and there's not that many, yet. there's just a couple that we added in places where people in the summertime would be like, what's fun, you know, like, they wouldn't know what the ski trail names were. Because when we update the map and that sort of stuff, that'll help as well, I think, yeah. Um, and I still have one replacement sign in my house. That the AMC sign maker made that says points uphill right from the parking lot to um to Hall's Ledge. Yeah. So it's an arrow. Or it says Hall's Ledge. And an arrow. I'm still waiting on the history, by the way. I found them last weekend. Oh, good, good. I haven't think I didn't connect my computer to my Wi-Fi network at home, but I did find them. I think there. I was surprised. There was only four. I found the, the drafts and then like the proofs, and it was either four or five signs for the cellar holes and. Yeah, thought we had had more, but hmm. I will figure. I will figure out how to move that up. Oh, okay. I know the problem. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, there was a. Did you make a motion to do that, or? I made a motion to approve the minutes and. Oh no, we voted those. Yeah, right? on so the on the signs. I don't think we need a motion on that unless people feel we do. Uh, I mean, I feel like it would be handy when we make signs. We can just, you know, it's a simple, again, it's all computer controlled, so. Yeah. Yeah, just when we make all the signs, do a batch and include it with that. In this case, we're taking advantage of the sheet that he already has, otherwise, yeah. we're going to go order the one. Yeah. Right. 
Right. So the, the additional code, yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And those sheets on a sheet. Yeah. They use the two sheets. Okay. I was just going to take the four by eight and figure out how many. No parking, and then just have one that says. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I will approach the select men after town meeting about having the gate move. Well, the Forest Service will move the gate, but having go up, clean up where the stump dump is now so it can be used for parking. So they're going to move the gate, the gate further up the trail? Is that what you're Yeah, if you know where the stump dump is, mm -hmm. I would say it's another 20 yards, 30 yards up okay. is where the official boundary is, so they would just move it up to where the... The only reason it's, it's where it is right now is because I think the town, and I, Dick may correct me on the history here, but I think the town, because access to the stump dump required a key to get in, so the Forest Service put it on Prospect Farmland as opposed to the uh, the actual boundary. Whereas if you go out like the Quail Trail, it's on the actual boundary. Yeah. Would you move it just past the stump dump or to the actual boundary? Might as well move it to the actual boundary. Yeah, it's not that much further. It's like yeah. another 100 yards maybe. And actually that clarifies it because anybody from Jackson can ski on the trails for free within the Prospect Farm Park. Yeah. And this will just designate when you actually, I mean there's a little sign up there now yeah. that says you're entering the forest. Service. Are they still the blue ones? Is no. The a lot of those, some of those go down. Because I remember the year that ski touring, you know, renegotiated or whatever their term is, their agreement with the town. And that became a written policy the first time, and those signs went up, and I feel like a bunch of them had fallen down. Could be, yeah. Do you still have to get a ticket to go? Ahead? I think you got to go to the town. I, I can't remember the, the agreement, but I think you got to go to the town, just so that the people who are monitoring tickets out there know that you mm -hmm. you got something as opposed to what you're seeing play out in North County right now, walkers and skiers. Um, you may, I guess, Mike may try to meet, meet, make the meeting a little bit later today when it's held up. Um, that'd be the only other prospect farm thing is on the 9th, the elementary school uh, trimming in the apple orchard. That's um, March 9th? Yeah. So coming right up. And I, I haven't heard anything else about that. Um, I have a pulp to give to him to just so he can drag tools up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the kids, <laughs> anytime they get to get a marshmallow or hot dog, they drag the, uh, the cut stuff to the side. <laughs> yeah. It could be pretty deep <laughs> snow up there right now. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a snowshoe kind of thing mm -hmm. with snowshoes. Yeah, you might need a little, a little sled or a Everybody bring their, their plastic sleds with them. Well, the, the students should go with either snowshoes or with skis. They shouldn't be foot talking. Um, I guess I, I can ask I can ask if he needs another one. I have a, a nice big pulp utilitarian. It can get messy. Yeah, I don't mind. This one too. Yeah, this one is like a diver who knows quadruple hand me down. So it's a pulp, you mean it's a thing that you can can, this one, yeah, it's intended. I mean, for us, we take Teddy and Stella so they can sit in it when we go skiing. But the brain that we have can also function as a cargo sled because it's not up on skis. Okay. It's like a big plastic sled with a house over it. Okay. So you can kind of throw stuff in it okay. pretty easily. Take the top off. And... Yeah. Okay. And it's got rigid arms, so you can ski with it, and it doesn't run you over. Okay. Really okay. That makes sense. All right. Well, if Mike doesn't make the meeting, I'll check with him if he needs any other tools. For that, what I mean, did Dudley just take tools last year? Do you? I don't know. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll check with him on that then. Um, and I think the plan was that they were gonna not just not pile things, spread it out into the woods um, for maintaining the the uh, the actual grass in the orchard. Um, Okay. Any other prospect farm items? I really want to see more rounds. Have a giant fire. 
I'm sure that'd be safe for them. Just call kids. Hey, marshmallows. <laughs> I feel like that's what Dick has suggested in the past, is having a big fire burning the, the orchard cutting. I'll, I'll take that as an affirmative. Um, okay. Uh, Jackson Falls, there. Any assistance on that? Um, I, yeah, just a little bit of input here real quick. I agreed to try to write up a stewardship management plan for the falls. And I'll just give you the outline that I've sketched out, which is pretty identical. It's not identical, but it's very similar to uh, Prospect Farm. But what it would have would be background, the purposes and goal of the management plan. It would have the donor's intent because some of that land was actually donated just as Prospect so that we can clarify some of those issues that are tied up with that. And then it would have the past and current management, which would be town votes, like on the Wild and Scenic and anything else I can dredge up. Um, relative, you know, how it relates to the master plan, relevant ordinances, budding landowners, recreation use and trends, and historic features. And I think the three historic features if I've got it correct, it would be the old hydroelectric, the bridge above, and the swimming pool below, which was part of the old Wentworth Hotel. Mm -hmm. Am I missing any historic outside of those three? I mean, those are the ones, there's, no, those are the big ones. I, don't know, I would love to know the details about the, mm -hmm. the hydro dam mm -hmm. and the existing pipes that run over the road <laughs> and all of it. Myself. I know, that is kind of curious. And then, I, I mean, that's all just sort of re recording what's out there. There's, there shouldn't be any controversy. It'll be more, did I miss something? Well, there's also the plan. Yeah, but then the part two is recreation, stewardship, regulations, policies, and recommendations. And here, I was going to, at least my tentative um, plan right now, is to divide it into the natural resources, which would be the falls and the vegetation. It's, at least on the town side. And here um, on the falls, we have one riparian study that was done about erosion on the banks and stuff. Soil scientists. Um, and if there's any others that I'm missing here, let me know. And then um, on vegetation, it would be mostly our replanting efforts. And we can try to refine, not tonight, but refine. Mm -hmm. What is it that we finally intend to do with? Revegetation, you know, what's what's our overall goal? As opposed to we'll try this, we'll try that, but what is it? And, and how close are we? Then historic resources, um, those are the three that I could come up with. I don't know whether there's, it's probably signage that we might want to have that gives a little bit of that history at some point, but that's to be determined in the future. And then for recreation, which is really going to be recreation management, I have the trails, I have signage, of which we now have the master sign up there, um, parking, and then amenities, which will be porta potty, porta potty <laughs> tables of benches, and ADA. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what's there. So that, that's the outline I have, is there, without trying to resolve what's going to be in the in those sections, are those the right sections? And if not, which ones am I missing? I think that's probably it. I mean, with the, with the riparian study, there was like the two, I guess that you would call them soil studies that had that came up with the, yep. those plans, which were, I guess, theoretically still operating under the approval from the select board to accomplish those goals. Yeah. Um, I haven't studied it in depth yet. Yeah. So. Because there's the original one, which was uh, 12 or 15, yeah. and then the updated one was maybe 16 or 17. Yeah. I don't know, give or Yeah. And I guess the other amenity, it's a small, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking details of the new categories. But the fences would count as an amenity with the long term plan for those. Yeah. But that's no different than a trail or a parking spot, you know, like what we intend and what we. Hope to do or not do. Yeah. Having a yeah, having a map would be good. Particularly given the the lower part of the falls. Yeah. Which one could argue either use the right amount or underused or you know, it's tricky because you have to cross private land, which we have a right of way to access the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. 
if I understand the bill correctly. Yeah, I know that you set up the uh, the link to where a lot of that stuff is. I haven't had a chance to study it yet, but I started the block out. Anything else? Um, not, not off the top of my head. I, I think that covers. I say the, the historic information. I know that there. Are, the historical society has a lot of things that. I don't know where those are included, but there were on the signs at the lower part of the falls. Yeah, and some of that history, I think, may be in the Wild and Scenic Report Report as well. I am not got down to that level yet, but, um, okay. but the uh, Historic Society is part of it. I have a question. On the island below the falls or downstream, Yep. has it been established that that is part of the uh, a gift to the town? I don't know the answer to that, Dick, but hopefully as I start to dig in, I, I'll come up with the answer. But Well, it, it would be interesting. Yeah. I, I can remember going down there on a work day and doing a lot of brush cutting, and, and I think we even had a little access bridge, which I'm sure is washed out, yeah. um, in that we're having a 100-year water event about every 10 years now. So uh, I think that access is probably gone, or I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't hiked around down there for a while. Boy, if there's any access out to that island now, I'm... It's we haven't maintained it. We used to maintain it where the bridge... I never saw the bridge personally, but yeah. I helped maintain the path to where the bridge used to be. And we used to have work days to go down there and cut that. And we operated as if that island was mm -hmm. town property to which there was a public right away across the Wentworth land by the gazebo. And there is a, we put in a sign with a grist wheel right at basically where you, north of the gazebo, right where you, the bridge used to be to start to go out to the island. I think there's a little interpretive sign there about the grist wheel, if I remember correctly, that actually got picked up. Larry found it. Larry found Wait, it. Dick, are you talking about the little island that's at the top of the falls or the one at the bottom? At the bottom. Oh, it's down at the bottom. The one at the, okay, because there's another one yeah. that's right at the right after you start off the top of the falls. This is your kind of behind those two houses. Yeah. I don't know, I'll, I'll try to, yeah. you know, a lot of times those deeds read to the river and then riparian owner X owns the underlying halfway across and did up with the other riparian land. Right? But uh, that's a good question. Invasive species is one I did miss. Mm -hmm. It should be in there as well. And the wild and scenic may have influence on that lower island. Yeah. I'm not sure. Once I get this going, you'll all get a chance to we'll not only give me recommendations, but give me answers. <laughs> okay. Well, I like that. I think that's a good start. And if you need any help, just let me know. I like editing. Everybody will get a shot at this thing. I was not planning, since you know there was surveys sent out on the parking and all that stuff. With Prospect, we sent out a survey. Um, I don't have the time to put a survey to get it, get it out. I don't know what others think, but um, if somebody wants to take the lead on that. I don't know if there's any goals or directions that are sort of in dispute other, or that need to be clearly defined yeah. beyond our stated goal to control erosion there. Yeah, I don't need, I mean, and, you know, this, this plan, once we get it together in a draft form, we can hold a public hearing on it and get others input as well. Yeah, I imagine it would be the same idea, like state what exists now, and then if we have something that's turning a ship, then. Well, if we put it into a regulation or a policy, like some of the parking and stuff, and some of that's already been embedded in policy already. It'd be a question of whether people want to change what is current policy as opposed to us inventing a new one. 
Yeah, uh, we're, I would say, I guess the, the current usage of town ordinances that would cover like the, the noise ordinance and the alcohol tobacco use there, which I have a slightly different reading of the, the noise ordinance when it comes to the public spaces. Yeah. But I think I'm in the minority there. Um, so maybe that's something we want to address? Yeah, I mean, I, what I'll do is start cutting a rough draft and then we can start to go through um, what is it that we as a commission think is the right answer and then we can have the, the public input part. Also, even before public input, you should probably reach out to the group that did the whole survey, um, the community survey for the falls. Yeah. And just, you know, just to say, okay, here's what we're doing. Uh, would you like to put some input in there? That was and, good. Uh, I think diplomatically that would be really good. Yeah. Because they did do the survey. So. Well, I think what we can do is once I, I get a rough draft, we can tell them we're hosting a meeting, you know, that's going to be on the agenda for the meeting here and invite them. Oh, that would be great. And that, that, that's the Friends, Friends of Jackson Falls? Yes, yeah. Jackson, Jackson Falls. Yeah. Okay. When, when, the select dick, when the select board forms an ad hoc committee like that, is it just open-ended or does it have a, a, a lifespan? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Because the individual still exists. Like, just the still exists. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they, if they haven't met or you know they're no longer actively pursuing anything. So then they become just you know residents, you know, interested members of the public. So if you're posting it, so everybody can come. Yeah, but making sure that we know that they read that particular use or however. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be. Okay. Well, it's easy enough. That's not, not a very big group. Um, but I'll, I'll make sure we include them in any forward steps beyond. Well, I always hate entering a meeting where it's a clean piece of paper because you go all over the map and get nowhere. I think it's always better to have a straw man out there. And be honest, it's a straw man. People can, you know, it's, it's up for complete revision editing. Mm -hmm. I just think you get to where you need to a lot faster without. Um, yep. First shot over the bow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In addition to dragging out my old computer, I got Margaret's old computer out. <laughs> um, to look at her stuff in prospect form, and it included basically a one-page outline of like a you know, 2016 or whatever. Like, okay, if you write a management plan for prospect form, these are like the major yeah. bullet points. That's you know basically what you wrote for prospect form. Great, excellent. Um, thank you. And just just let me know if you need need anything or. The easy part is making the outline. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, that sometimes can be the hard part. It can be. Once you get into it. Mm. Okay. Um, did you, Pam, get any other information on the, the firms? I did some research, and um, what, it's hard to find stuff, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. I know I've looked at this before, and it's been easy, but I was wondering if it would be okay if I just went and, you know, Ordered some plants so that we'll have them in the spring to put them in. Because um, I think it'd be interrupted firm and it's gonna be Christmas, but it might not be quite right. Bracken maybe. Because those would be up near where the bridge is, correct? They're gonna be right near where we planted the sod. You know, the sod that's across from the handicapped parking area at the falls. Near, the, near the, the, the highest picnic table in that, that area. Yeah, about a, 
So if you're if you have your back to the handicapped parking area, yep. and in front of you there's the big tree and the sod it, to the left, just a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay. So it's it's not anywhere near the handicapped part. It's just the whole point is just to kind of sh shrink the trail that's next to the big tree and mm -hmm. going to the left a little bit. It's just a big old. Place. I have some thoughts about defining the trails better, but let's not get into that. Let's get here. But I think there are some ways of trying to corral people in a little bit. Particularly in the areas where it's hard to put sawdust because it washes out when you get high water mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, like getting out to where the high bench is. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, the whole area is a high bench. I'd be curious as to what you could well, do for that. Um, you know, you could put in, I mean, just a quick example, you could put in posts that are about yay high and just have nice rope that's like this that just defines the path right out. Because when you try to define it now, you're stepping out of the roots, you're not going to cover that up with sawdust. I and mean, those are just some thoughts real quick. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the wild things of that original plan was basically <laughs> it called for blanketing the whole area with soil trail or no trail to cover up all of the root structures everywhere that and then just find the trails with, mm. you know, with whatever. Yeah, they get washed out every single time. Mm. I mean, it's the street wall concept up in the Alpine area, except that I don't think street wall makes um, That's one of the quick thoughts I had. Okay. Uh, uh, does Pam, I give you my friend, he's a, he's a gardener mm -hmm. and does a lot of ecological land care. And I was talking to him about ferns, okay. and he had some some thoughts oh, on good. that. Okay. So okay. Um, I will give him your number okay. um, or your info. Okay. I I was talking about that, and he said it wasn't. They're easy to do, but uh, they're. His recommendation was just getting um, was small blister packs rather than rootstock. Oh. Um, but okay. yeah. I mean, the one thing you want to think about when you put plants out, the idea is to convince people not to go. And I, and I know this from some alpine trampling studies we did way back in the 1980s. Um, you know, some species are quite resistant to trampling, and some, like ferns, are not. And so if the idea is to put vegetation there that you want to use them to deter the hiking public, you don't want to take stuff that's really sort of soft, succulent, etc. Because once they step down, they're done. Whereas if you have something that's brushy or, you know, some of the grasses and sedges are much more tolerant of hiking over. But my guess is ferns are not very tolerant. Well, the ferns were there until the town kept cutting them down year yeah. after year after year. So they were there for quite a long time. But if you're getting foot traffic, they were, you, but they were right along that. Path. Yeah. yeah. Historically. It's just something to take into consideration. Yeah, I think it's yeah. a good idea. I think there's some spots there that would be nice to be filled in with stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll send you the agents. Thank you. So, um, one, other, one other thing on Jackson Falls. Yeah. Do we know if the bridge is going to be replaced and fixed this coming summer? Dick, do you know? I don't. I know that they were tied up on the the railings and the historic, and in the end decided it was cheaper to keep the historic railings. But, um, I think there's been some action on it. I forget what I heard. Because it was supposed to be done last summer, and then... Yeah. I have not heard anything, yeah. so... Who would be... That would be the Selectman and Highway Department. I can check with Mike DeFrucio if you want to. Yeah. Because as we think of management, mm -hmm. um, you know, if that bridge is shut off this summer, that will affect how yep. things happen there. Okay. In a major way. Yeah, it really changed. There's no bridge there. And well, you have all that construction working at the same time. Yeah. Okay, anything else for Jackson? Uh, I don't have anything for Gray's Inn. I imagine there's still, I don't think Brian's been out there at all. So whatever blowdowns that are there are still there. Um, K 
community garden. Um, after we, we talked the other day, uh, you noticed that the posts had come down. The corner posts yeah. have come down. They need, I think they need four by fours, probably. So. I'm just trying to think of a different anchoring system okay. that wouldn't require having to dig down. Because of all the rocks. Right, so just having kind of a wider base that. So rather than relying on the depth of the post, have something spread out that can have weight on top of it. Okay. That'd be cool. I don't know what that would look like. I don't know what it would be, but that's a really good idea. Better than doing, trying to dig through the rock. Right. Because it's really rocky. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I guess, I put that on there just as kind of a, as a question, like, do you plan on having like an opening up yeah. work? day or have a day where you expect people to start working in there? Or? I haven't considered that yet, um, but we certainly could have a work day. It's just a matter of, you know, what work we would need to do. Because I was thinking that the fence repair might be something that I could perhaps get the road department to do. But, okay. But I don't know if there's something better that you might have. That's not so hard to stall. I I don't know. I imagine the machinery solves a lot of problems. <laughs> but yeah, but not when there's rocks. When there's rocks like that, I think that's, that would be hard. It just means a bigger hole. Yeah. Um, is the highway department because they put signs and stuff in. They must run into this problem. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was thinking maybe I was frank about that too. Okay. Yeah. But I just would like hate to get to the point where the fence is don't consider the fence and then deer deer gets in and wipes everything out and discourages people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think that's an if. <laughs> that's a, a win. Just a win. Yeah. I sent you the link, uh, the link, yeah. Um, well, Dick's wife, I think, is the, the uh, Whitney Center has yes, got a yes. program on gardening. Yeah. Um, I, I think signed it, up. So I'll do that. You may want to send it around to the yes. folks that have signed up. Yeah. Dick, do you know if there are more spaces in Anne's um, seminar? I can get her. She's right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Any more spaces? I don't know if they know. Anne, yeah. we need you. That's her. Hey, hey there. <laughs> Anne, I was wondering if you have any more openings in your seminar. Um, yeah, can you say that again? Because Dick has his headphones on. I can oh. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you have any more openings in your seminar? Uh, I'll have to look into that for you, Pam. I'm sorry? And yeah, okay. I will look into it and let you know. Okay, thank you. But thank, no, thank you for your interest <laughs> and your support. I appreciate it. Because there's not much more seminar around. Um, so I guess just keep us posted. Posted. Yeah, posted <laughs> on the post. Yeah, there you go. I tried to make a pun Did in French the other day. Oh, wow. That's a bone beyond. <laughs> and I can't even remember what it was, and it fell so flat. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't speak French. I just know these two words, and they're interchangeable, and I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> but apparently English. <laughs> Well, and I got like I got the kind of pat on the head, like the five-year-old pat on the head, like oh, nice try, nice try. But yeah, that's about that's my level of humor. Um, okay, uh, I don't have anything for the Wildcat River or conservation easements or wetlands. Um, I guess. 
before I move on to new business, I did the Jackson Eastside Walk is um, moving forward uh, with bids and trying to get work scheduled this year to resurface the walk. The board took a vote to spend the money, so they would like to spend the money this year. And Recon Trail Design has submitted a bid um, for that, so we may be doing that. Uh, just in, in our meeting, talking about kind of planning and just trying to be aware of things that are happening in the town that if we knew about them, we could schedule around them. And the only thing that in my mind was the wildcat, wild quack event and 4th of July that having the town green sort of taken up with machinery for a week. Parts in, parts in the park and that sort of thing. Is that all done through the commerce? Or the I'm not sure. The fireworks? Mm -hmm. yeah. it parts in the park. Events, oh, yeah, 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 in the park. Uh, I think they have to get permits from the town, right? Yeah, I imagine there has to be some involvement from the town, but mm -hmm. at least to know of. So they might have a calendar. Okay. And the Carver Bridge 10K was run last year. You might want to, it used to finish down by the pond. And you might want to just check and see if they've got that scheduled. Okay. And I, um, Skeeter White's is. Yeah, I can ask yeah. Andrew about that. Okay. Um, we had talked about getting it done sooner rather than later, just so it could be used for the summer, but I didn't want didn't want it to ever, like, even possibly get hung up with the 4th of July. So um, that was my only thinking. Because you think it's going to take a week? Well, when, when we went and looked at the trail, it had just snowed. So we're unable to fully view things and just from his eye looking at the grading of the land and um, oh, this is something else that there were a couple of spots that may need to be completely rebuilt and regraded especially the approaches to the bridge you know the bridge and we also um, were discussing that we probably need to coordinate with Jackson ski touring at that time uh, what their requirements for a bridge would be. If they've changed it all, if there's any grooming equipment to change, because... Check with Ellen. Yeah. Because that's where they do the, the after school, because um, Jackson, run, the ski train runs the PT, the uh, phys ed, in the, in the winter for the ski program. And I think they use that area a lot. Yeah. But check with that. I mean, it's just the width of the groomer. Okay. It's a pretty short span. And hopefully you're not like the Forest Service where you got to build it to... Right. Old and the Sherman tank or whatever. I mean, originally it had been just a footpath. Yeah. And, or a footbridge. And they, they put the wider bridge on there so that they could drive the groomer Groom across. across. Um, which is that Jackson Ski Touring originally had paid for that bridge. Um, but, all right, I'll talk to Ellen about that. Um, I can tell you the expenses we have with the Forest Service right now on bridges is off the charts. Yeah, and I, 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 I kind of, because you you'd mentioned that before, I feel like it's a low priority bridge. Yeah. Jackson Ski Touring, and if it's functional and serviceable now, and we can regrade the approaches to it, so in the future mm -hmm. if it needs to be replaced. But also, um, take into account any of the, uh, in that upper field, 
there's kind of a low pooling area and just making sure that the pathway doesn't get washed out again in, in the springtime. So he had some recon was thinking that there would need to be some trail rebuilding, installing of uh, uh, a geotextile under with um, a geo cell over that as a base with the stone dust on top, similar to the stone mountain or not stone mountain, tin mountain trails that he has done, um, just as a longer wearing product rather than it had just been gravel put on the existing surface. So that's kind of where we're at with that at the moment. Um, the other thing, new business that Pam had forwarded to me, but also came from the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions, was a house bill that's going through right now, a committee on licensure and regulatory reform. And it touches on conservation commissions because proposed in this is the elimination of um, several uh, licenses, one of them for forester, uh, soil science, and wetland well scientist. Um, I don't know if we can, if you have anything additional to say about that, Pam, or? Well, the only thing I was thinking is, the nice thing is that you get these people out there that have these certifications and need a certain level of professionalism and knowledge. And you get rid of that, and then the public doesn't know. And there was an article that I did circulate to everybody, but it's kind of late. But basically, it said New Hampshire is the second most forested state, you know, in, in the United States. And so we have a lot of private lands that, you know, need to be um, managed. And so you want people who have the skills to do that. I don't know why they would be taking away the licensing requirements. I don't understand that. It's the, don't get me into politics, but it's the, any government is bad government, watch it. If you read through the list, it's, it's scary. X-ray technicians and yeah. hospitals, MRI technicians and hospitals, all that licensing would go. It's like. Well, a lot of it is being combined. There were, there were a lot of boards that were getting, com yeah. that were separate, but yeah. There's a whole list of who's getting. I thought the funniest one was the license. I, I, I read the book. What was the, 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 the L and A? And the L stands for license. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what are they going to be, an A? <laughs> My recommendation would be, and I, I haven't seen the schedule, schedule of the bill, um, you know, as a commission, we could write relative to the sections that would affect our interest and say we believe that the forestry wetlands and soil scientists should be qualified and licensed, as opposed to you or me just walking in and saying I'm a soils expert. Right. That was that was sort of my my feeling on it is that as a as a volunteer non professional advisory board we have to take outside information to complete our our task and it's it's hard to offer the best solutions to the town if we if there is not a state agency that puts a stamp of approval on that. But that said, that doesn't mean that as a board we can't choose when we search out those things that we can't look for someone who has an accreditation. But I believe some of the articles I read is that you know national professional board level certification doesn't deal with state specific issues or may not have a requirement for state specific knowledge. Um, Are there other entities that certify those three particular, never mind the rest of the list, foresters and wetland scientists and soil scientists? 
like a professional group? I have never thought about it. Um, the Ecological Society of America has a certification problem uh, process for ecologists. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's not atypical. I mean, it's a simple question I would ask is, we could have hired any Tom, Dick, or Harry to do the forestry management plan up at Prospect. I think we had comfort with the individual because he was licensed. He was both experienced and licensed. Um, if they do away with that, you know, I can come in and say, I'm a forester. Uh, I can give you a cheaper rate. Yes. Yeah. And the same with the falls. Yeah. A certified to a scientist, so that our recommendation to a select board kind of wait. It's like doctors. It doesn't guarantee you're going to get a great doctor or a good doctor, but at least you know. Uh, nine out of ten <laughs> times you get somebody that's at least got a certain level of skills. So there will always be a few bozos that pass these things, but um, I, I, I would recommend that we, I mean, we have to take a look at the schedule as to when the, the bill is up and when you can get you, because those things move rather fast. It's in committee right now. They're, yeah. they're, um, yeah. So they are accepting comments comments and letters and the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions recommended if we were to do that, we need to have a motion bill that we've taken a policy position on this as a board. Um, and have someone write a letter reflecting that. Well, I, I would make a motion as a board that um, we, we do put in a letter in opposition to their delay to, to removing relicensing requirements for the, the elements that are relevant to this commission. I don't think we should get into the others, and that would be on the wetland, the soils, and the forestry. I don't think it, it doesn't have to be a very long letter. So I'll, I'll make that motion. I second it. Okay. Any discussion? Anyone want to volunteer? I think what you said sounds very really good and it's very short. Okay. We can go it's back. A one, it's a one paragraph letter. Yeah. We just believe that. Um, the, I mean, I, what you want to put in there is just essentially that. Um, we, as a conservation commission, periodically hire a professional forester. We have, when we hire one, we have confidence in the licensing. And we, we feel that it's important to us because we don't always know who's qualified or not. And the licensing process helps us. And we believe that, uh, and the same with wetlands or soils. Yeah, because we have hired soils like this. Yeah. Um, and when we hire them, that's part of the criteria that's used. And we believe that removing the criteria uh, is a step backwards and oppose this component of the bill. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Um, um, then because time is of the essence, I don't think you need to circulate the letter here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Short, sweet. Okay. I saw the email you sent and I glanced at it, but I didn't. Do we know why? You guys are talking about this for like 20 minutes. We don't no. have to talk about that. Okay. Minutes. You guys are talking about this. Politically, minutes. it's all government's bad government. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cut in the red tape. I gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things working in an industry where some of the people are licensed, some of them are not licensed. It's nice to have standards that you can refer to as acceptable or whatnot, but I agree with that. Okay. Um, and I should point out, it's not required that you hire. We weren't required to hire a professional forester. Mm -hmm. It's just that it gave us confidence when we hired the one that we had that he had a certain skill set. Yeah. Yeah. You're not required to hire a lawyer. If it's past the bar, you can represent yourself. You can. Or you can go to a paralegal service. You can go to a paralegal service. Practicing all that license. Oh, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Um, <laughs> 
For the next item, the Saco River Watershed Stream Crossing Assessment Project meeting is going to be, they'll have a Zoom meeting on April 19th at 6. My favorite topic, culverts. Um, so if, I'm sure most of you are on, have received that email, but if anyone is interested in that, I can send an invitation to the meeting. If you could, I don't, I don't have it currently, but if I do, I have it. Okay. Yeah. And then one of you or not the other. Yeah, so that'll be April 19th. Um, oh, the 19th. 19th? Yeah, so it's yeah. April 12th. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a typo. Where did it put you? No, it's April 12th, 2023, 6 to 7.30. It's the 12th. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's the 19th, not the 12th. And I will, I'll forward that along to anyone who wants. But it, it'll be talking about a number of things, aquatic organism, passage, those things, hanging culverts, so. And it's a large area survey, so. It'll be really exciting. <laughs> all I have. Mike, do you have anything on the uh, Orchard Day? Yes. Um, it is this Thursday. Um, due to a number of unlucky cir circumstances, um, I don't think Brian or Dudley are going to be able to be there. So I was meeting with the teacher and we're going to, uh, he, he's maintained the apple trees before I have as well. So I think that we are not going to actually touch anything. But we're going to go up there, we're going to look at last year's cuts and kind of just see if we can tell like how the trees did after pruning them back. Um, and then we're going to tie into other what social studies competencies that they're working on. So okay. I think we're going to pivot a little bit. But it's still happening. Um, since I'll be there, I'm, I'm still going to say it's a, also a Jackson Conservation <laughs> Commission thing, <laughs> along with Ten Down. Um, and uh, it'll be great. It'll be great. Uh, and I contacted Ellen and I asked her, Ellen, at ski touring, and they're going to try and get a group to run up there, you know, either tomorrow or the next day, just because with the free stall, it'll probably be a little, it won't be great conditions coming back down from it. Um, so our plan is to not make a mess. So anyone reading the minutes that was unhappy with the mess that was made last time, it won't happen. It won't happen. I, I apologize if anyone was upset about it last time. Okay. And on a new business, um, the selectmen had sent out, I think it was in e news, that they have a facility subcommittee group. And one of those subcommittees is to improve communications on trails in Jackson. And they're looking for volunteers. I'm willing to jump on it as a rep of this group if you want me to. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be excellent. Communication. I think that would be excellent input. What does that mean? For that group. I, I'm, to be honest, I got a little confused where the facilities committee was going with their question here. I think a lot of people were, but um, um, there's all these ideas that came in, and I think they because they have one for what the Gibson Center and a few other things as well it was in that list um, there's a couple of Jackson E news is back now probably a week or two back but um, I'd find out when the group first meets <laughs> tell you more after but it's it's about improving communications on trails okay and then another one was on improving signage in town about where you can park. Mm -hmm. So when they say communication on trails, do they mean communication as to where the trails are or better signage on the trails? Uh, I would guess, but not having had a meeting, I'm only guessing at this point, but um, you know, there's the Ski Terrain Foundation trails, there's the, um, in both winter and summer, I mean, because the Ski Terrain Foundation maintains trails free and open to the public in the summer. You have the Tin Mountain Trails. Um, you have the sort of historic walk in town. 
I suspect what they're looking for is to create some sort of inventory that they can put up on the website that gives clear information on these. That's my guess. And, you know, you've got your trail along the river here. And, I mean, there's all kinds of different trails out there under the auspices of all different groups. Yeah. Okay. That's excellent. Let me know when you learn. The subcommittee that you said that is looking at parking in town, do we need to, since we've talked, since we've talked a lot about parking at the falls, do we need to just make sure that they're not planning something differently than what we've talked about for a long, long time? I think they said, it just said parking signage. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I suspect what they're looking at is pointing people to where there's existing parking that's not being utilized in a major way, like, you know, by the Jackson Library, the old tennis court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I'm not on that. Okay. But it, it would be good to get clarity because, you know, people are starting to park like where the tennis club is to use the falls and that's not what that parking lot is intended for. Just as the Ski Touring Foundation's parking lot in the summer now is intended for people hiking those trails or not for the Jackson Falls. Did I just see? Oh, it's Betty's Pasture. There were cars parked on Black Mountain Road. I didn't know that looked illegal. I didn't see any signs. I didn't look like you could do that. It's illegal to park anywhere along the road in Jackson in the winter. Yeah. Outside of I think like here in front of the wildfires. They weren't. Oh, was it because the lot at Hindi Hill was a lot? Of Hindy, no, the lot was full, oh. and cars were parking like yeah. on the side, which I've never seen. I mean, I've seen a lot full before, but I hadn't seen people park on the road before there. When was that Friday? That was on Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Sunday afternoon. That may be, um, there was a machine, a, a grooming machine that was brought in for a demo. And so I'm gonna guess people were just chasing behind it to ski these pastures. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. But you know, the signs, like they have signs, no parking. Um, you know, the Woodchuck parking lot. But all those now are buried in the snow banks. Right. I mean, they're, Somebody from out of town wouldn't even know that they were parking illegally. He came in right now. I mean, the equivalent of like the fiber fair, like holding the fields next to the fair, and you turn the parking to that one, the one with the year that you need it. <laughs> they just park on the soccer field. <laughs> Thirty dollars a day. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, any other comments? Hank? No. I just have one thing. I just oh, wanted to let people sorry. know that. My brother-in-law is now the wetland specialist for the northern part of New Hampshire, which would be that part. But I don't have anything to do really with the wetland stuff, so I just want to put it out there. Okay. There's the problem. For DES? Or? I'll bother him then with all my emails. <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything from you, Dick? So. Okay. Is there a, a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. It's good to see you, Dick. Bye.